Hello and welcome to this video on why model fit testing is important in structural equation modeling and factor analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually talk about an analysis in the Mplus software and on Thursdays I talk about more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free resources including a link to my weekly statistics newsletter as well as free courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video I want to talk about model fit testing in structural equation modeling and that is a topic that frustrates many people because in many cases we find that a structural equation model or factor model that we fit to our data does not show the level of fit that we would like to see. Maybe the model has a significant chi-square test of model fit and maybe the chi-square test is, has a large value. Maybe we also have other fit statistics that we look at and they don't look good. And this is one of the things that especially beginners with structural equation modeling often get very frustrated about because then they don't know what to do and they also wonder whether they have to pay attention to these tests of model fit at all and for what reason. And so first of all, the ability to test a model against the observed data is one of the major strengths of the framework of structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis compared to analyses such as multiple regression analysis of variance and others which are saturated or which imply saturated statistical models and therefore cannot be tested in the sense that they could be wrong for the observed data. And so with structural equation and factor models, we typically test or we typically analyze non-saturated models, meaning models that are over-identified, that have testable restrictions, positive degrees of freedom. And it's one of the uh, major strength of this approach that we are able to then see whether a model reproduces our observed variable covariances and potentially means adequately. Now if you want to know more about the issue of saturated versus non-saturated models, the issue of model identification. Then you also find videos on those topics here on this channel in which I talk more specifically about saturated model, model identification and so on. So check that out as well. Here I want to focus on model fit and so let's talk about what it means when your model doesn't fit and why it is important to pay attention to the misfit of your model. So what the model fit test, the chi-square test in structural equation modeling and factor analysis tests is whether your observed covariance structure is reproduced adequately. So the null hypothesis that is tested with the chi-square test is that the covariance structure in the population is equal to the covariance structure that is implied by your model. If you're including means in your structural equation model as well, which we sometimes do, for example, in longitudinal analysis, such as growth models or in multi-group modeling, when we compare different groups, then we also are interested in mean differences and uh, mean or mean trajectories over time. And when you include means, then also the hypothesis, the null hypothesis for the chi-square test of model fit would include a hypothesis that the mean vector in the population is equal to the model implied mean vector as well. And so why should we care about the fact that this hypothesis, this null hypothesis of perfect model fit is rejected, for example, according to the chi-square test of model fit. The issue is that when the chi-square test is significant and when it shows that there is significant misfit, so say, um, or lack of fit between your observed data structure and the model implied data structure, then this could mean that the model that you fit 
yields biased parameter estimates, meaning incorrect parameter estimates, because those estimates are based on the idea that the model fits. And if it doesn't fit, then those parameters may not apply. They may not adequately explain your observed covariance and mean structure. The easiest way to understand this is perhaps, or one easy way, is to think of the fact that you may have fit a one factor model to a set of indicators, so a single factor model, when in fact a model with two correlated factors and a modest correlation between the two factors would be the correct data generating model that holds true in the population. So in that case, when you fit a one factor model, when in fact the data were generated by a two factor model, then obviously the factor loadings and the factor variance that you get from the one factor model and other parameters potentially are likely to be biased. So you might end up with incorrect factor loadings, you might end up with an incorrect um, estimate of residual variances, of the reliabilities of the indicators, and then obviously it also doesn't make sense to interpret that single factor when you don't know what that factor really would be when there's in fact two factors underlying your data. And so then also the covariance or correlation between the two factors is not even part of your model. So you're missing important information. You're assuming that there's unidimensionality when in fact there is multidimensionality. And so you might miss an important fact about um, measurement. Likewise, when you have a structural equation model where you have a latent path model, where you have structural relationships between latent variables, meaning regression, relationships, then if you assume that some of the paths between latent variables, some of the direct effects are zero, when in fact they're not zero, then the other paths in your model may be biased, the R squared values that result from the structural model may be biased and so on. And therefore, model fit is an important issue because when you have misfit, then the result could be that your parameter estimates are not valid, that they're not meaningful and not, and not really interpretable. You might draw incorrect conclusions from your model. You might draw incorrect conclusions about the structure of the world, so to say, the causal effects or the causal structure of the world, the measurement structure that holds true. And then that might cause a lot of confusion potentially in the literature when you publish results based on a model that is incorrect. And so that's why we need to care about model fit is because otherwise our results may be incorrect. Now, what can you do when you find that your model does not fit when you have a chi-square that is significant and potentially large indicating that there are um, unexplained or underexplained covariances or means in your data set, then you should closely take a close look at model residuals. You can request residual covariance statistics in structural equation modeling software. For example, in M plus, it's the residual output, but other programs will give you um, the same thing as well. And so then you can take a look at which covariances are not well explained by your model and you can generate hypotheses about how the model may have to be re-specified, may have to be changed to um, adequately or more adequately account for the relationships in your data. You can also take a look at model modification indices, which can sometimes be helpful in pointing you towards the missing effects, the missing paths in your model that are most um, relevant in terms of um, the chi-square misfit. And so, for example, those modification indices can sometimes point you to residual associations between indicators or cross loadings that you may have omitted or other omitted effects in the model. I have videos on this channel also in which I show how to um, obtain and interpret model residuals and model modification indices. So you can check out those videos here as well. Another thing that I want to mention is that there's also the case where a model is over specified. So you may end up with a model where you have a non significant chi square, a good looking chi square, and you may be happy, but this does not guarantee that your model is correct for several reasons. So first of all, there are always 
alternative models that make different assumptions that will show the same chi-square. So you could reformulate or you could um, come up with um, equivalent models for um, any given data set that show the same chi-square. So it's no guarantee that when you have a fitting model that that is the true model or the data generating model. So that should also be kept in mind. And you might have a good chi-square, but it might actually be an over-specified model where you have maybe too many factors or you have other parameters that are um, too much or a model as a whole is nonsensical. You have maybe pr a model with factors that have no clear interpretation or meaning that are not psychometrically well defined where it's not clear what really such a factor means even though the model fits well. So model fit alone is not a guarantee that your model is a good model and that it can be um, useful and that um, it, it's the best possible model because there are also alternative models. But in summary, you should pay attention to model fit. If you get model misfit, then you should examine why this is the case and you should honestly report that your initial model did not fit and that you maybe had to re-specify your model, change your model, you should document which modifications were made post hoc after you found out that the initial model was rejected. So what other parameters then did you add to the model later perhaps, or how did you change the model so it fit better because that's important because that's then all already based on the data. It is a data-driven process and not a theory-driven process at that point when you look at um, the residual statistics, you look at modification indices, then you're already using the data to explore other options and so then that moves away from the confirmatory model testing approach to a more exploratory approach that uses the data to generate um, new hypotheses. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about model fit assessment and confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling. If you did, then please like this video, subscribe to the channel and check out the description for additional free resources and I'll see you next time.